in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May all the earth give you worship and praise, and break into song to your name, O God Most High. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Welcome to this online live streamed Eucharist, but it comes live streamed from St Cuthbert's Church in Shotley Bridge, where I'm joined by our Thursday midweek congregation. It's actually Thursday, the 20th of January, but this is a video that we're sharing as well for use on the following weekend, the weekend which includes Sunday, the 23rd of January, the third Sunday of Epiphany. Whether you're joining us now live in the church, um, or later on, you're most welcome to join with us as we offer our praises and prayers before God our Father. We come mindful of our need, but also with our causes for praise and thanksgiving. We become conscious that Christ already waits for us with his love, forgiveness and mercy. So let us begin as we confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The story continues after the fight between David and Goliath, the giant warrior who comes out to represent the Philistine armies. On their way back, as David was returning after killing the Philistine, the women came out to meet King Saul from all the towns of Israel, singing and dancing to the sound of tambourine and lyre and cries of joy. And as they danced, the women sang, Saul has killed his thousands and David his tens of thousands. Saul was very angry. The incident was not to his liking. They have given David the tens of thousands, he said, but me only the thousands. He has all but the kingship now. And Saul turned a jealous eye on David from that day forward. Saul told Jonathan his son and all his servants of his intention to kill David. Now Jonathan, Saul's son, held David in great affection. And so Jonathan warned David, my father Saul is looking for a way to kill you, he said. So be on your guard tomorrow morning. Hide away in some secret place. Then I will go and keep my father company in the fields where you are hiding, and will talk to my father about you. I will find out what the situation is and let you know. So Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul his father. He said, Let not the king sin against his servant David, for he has not sinned against you, and what he has done has been greatly to your advantage. He took his life in his hands when he killed the Philistine, and the Lord brought about a great victory for all Israel. You saw it yourself and rejoiced. Why then sin against innocent blood in killing David without cause? 
Saul was impressed by Jonathan's words and took an oath. As the Lord lives, I will not kill him. Jonathan called David and told him all these things. Then Jonathan brought him to Saul and David attended on him as before. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, in God I trust, I shall not fear. In God I trust, I shall not fear. Have mercy on me, God, men crush me. They fight me all day long and oppress me. My foes crush me all the day long, for many fight proudly against me. In God I trust, I shall not fear. You have kept an account of my wanderings. You have kept a record of my tears. Are they not written in your book? Then my foes will be put to flight on the day I call to you. In God I trust, I shall not fear. This I know, that God is on my side. In God whose word I praise, in the Lord whose word I praise. In God I trust, I shall not fear. What can mortal man do to me? In God I trust, I shall not fear. I am bound by the vows I have made you. O oh God, I will offer you praise, for you rescued my soul from death, you kept my feet from stumbling, that I may walk in the presence of God, in the light of the living. In God I trust, I shall not fear. Alleluia, alleluia, your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lakeside, and great crowds from Galilee followed him, from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, Transjordania, and the region of Tyre and Sidon. Great numbers who had heard of all he was doing came to him, and he asked his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, to keep him from being crushed. For he had cured so many that all who were afflicted in any way were crowding forward to touch him. And the unclean spirits, whenever they saw him, would fall down before him and shout, You are the Son of God. But he warned them strongly not to make him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Do you be seated, please. For those who may be joining in with this video at a later time, I have to say these are not Sunday readings, these are weekday readings, which are chosen in a different way to those that we use Sunday by Sunday. There's a continuity in these readings. We move from one passage to the next through various books of the Bible. At the moment, from the first book of Samuel, which is telling us of the wars between the Philistines and the Israelites, and through the book the Gospel of St. Mark. But there is a common theme in each of these, and that is the issue of popularity. In that first reading, there's the question of whether David is a threat to the king, King Saul, because David has become more popular. Saul indeed does have a popularity. In the wake of victory, people come out to greet the king and David, the new champion, the women sing, Saul has killed his thousands, David his tens of thousands. As though there is something great about killing lots and lots of people. But Saul's complaint is, they're only allotting thousands of deaths to me, to David, tens of thousands. That's the way that you count victory in war. Well, David has come out on top. That might make you think, of course, who those who, who jockey for popularity in the politics of our day, and not only in our own nation, are those who may seem to be more popular, a threat to us. Do we need to get them out? Do we find that when governments and prime ministers are threatened, well, they decide to move aside the civil servants or those who serve in the cabinet? so that their glory may be the more apparent. 
Well, that's something that we may be thinking about in the days to come. There's no doubt about the popularity of Jesus, though, and that's something, thankfully, that doesn't come from victory in war. Rather, it's what people see in his preaching and in his acts of healing. The word has got around, and now people come out in great crowds from all over, not only from Galilee, the lakeside where he is, the Sea of Galilee, but from other provinces around, from Judea, Jerusalem, even further away, Idumea, Transjordania, and to the north from Tyre and Sidon, modern-day Lebanon. The people keep coming. They want something from Jesus. They want to hear from him. They know he has something to say to him. They find in him healing as well. And so great is the crowd, there's the danger that he might be crushed. And so he pushes out into the lake in a boat. That's another account of Jesus taking to a boat, and it's to make his preaching all the more effective. The people can't hear simply as he stands by the shore. He goes out into what seems to be a creek so that they may line the banks and listen to him. Here we're told simply about the great numbers who come out. But remember that it's not numbers that count for everything. This is a time of year when churches in the Church of England at least are required to send in their statistics. The numbers of people who might be attending church, those indeed these days who might be joining us online as well. That's really a very difficult thing to work out. Do you put down the number of people who engage, as Facebook puts it, those who have a three-second view, those who have a one-minute view? Um, how do you know how long people are actually engaging with you? What you can say is that people are coming out in their hundreds and in their thousands. And that's something to be glad about. But then, in fact, I look on YouTube and people who do things like videos on competitive eating or rating takeaways can have hundreds of thousands of views. So how are we doing against them? Do we complain? Well, quite aside from popularity in the media, the important thing I want to say is that people should be there. And it's actually the being there that, first of all, is important. There's a danger if we seek to make ourselves too activist. If we say, you have to do all the following to be successful as a disciple. The first thing that is required of us as disciples is that we simply do turn up. We can be thankful that so many more are turning up through the social media. We need people to be making their return to our churches in the wake of the pandemic. It's being here, knowing that ours is a common prayer, that we're there in a common enterprise, joining our prayers together, that is, first of all, so important. And it's to acknowledge as well that we can't do it all ourselves. I found increasingly myself, as the pandemic has gone on, that I need to join my prayer with others. And so it might be joining in with other people's services through Facebook or YouTube. Yesterday, it was to go along to Durham Cathedral on my way from seeing my mother uh, returning home and dropped off. I was really quite surprised at the number of people simply there, half past five on a Wednesday afternoon, joining their prayers to those which were going to be offered anyway. We offer our prayers, but already, of course, the presence of God is real. And when we offer our prayers, we're joining them to the whole company of heaven. So let's give thanks. When there are the crowds, let's not, though, be distracted by what might count for popularity. The important thing is the being there for those people who go out to meet with Jesus and the disciples. We can be thankful that there's something really meaningful going on in their lives, that they hear a word, that hearts are touched, that people are healed. And let it be our prayer that that may continue to be so. Let us pray for the church and for the world and let us thank God for his goodness.
we pray for God's grace. We give thanks for the things that we may find to make a real difference in our lives. The love of people around us, friendship which is offered, a kind word, that word which we may receive from God through Christ, that word who is made flesh with whom we meet in this sacrament of Holy Communion. We pray for those who feel alone, for those who need affirmation from others, for those who are concerned that they're not popular enough, that they may know their value in themselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the whole Church of Christ, Today within our Diocese of Durham we pray for our bishops, Paul and Sarah, for the Secretary of the Diocese, James Morgan, and all who work with him in the diocesan offices, for the Deanery of Easington, the parishes of St Mary the Virgin, Siam with Dorden, and Siam Harbour, at St. and St John, Siam Harbour, and for All Saints Deanside for their vicar, Father Paul Kennedy, for the people of the parish. Pray for our wider Anglican communion, for the church in Nigeria, for the Diocese of Kaba and its bishop, Stephen Akobi. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our leaders in government and opposition, for those who seek to make themselves more popular or to hold on to popularity when it seems to wane. Pray in all things for integrity, seeking after truth and honesty, for wisdom which goes beyond measures that may seem to be popular. Pray for those who advise the government, for those who will act upon the advice and seek to implement it. Pray for the nations of the world, for those who also live with issues of the coronavirus, but in addition who are fearful in the midst of war, violence, injustice and oppression. Pray for the peoples of Eastern Europe, for the people of Ukraine as Russian forces mass on their border, for other nations in discussions and threats. We pray for those who suffer through natural disaster and especially at this time for the people of Tonga after the volcanic eruptions and tsunami, for those seeking to bring relief to them. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. It's our particular concern for prayer within our own parish. Pray today for all who have a concern for the environment. Seek to make us mindful of our human responsibility to God's creation. For those who work in the field of climate change. For those who seek to protect people against flood and against drought, against the extremes of weather. For those who formulate policies which need action in the years to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With our diocese, we pray for all those who work in the field of human rights, the work of Amnesty International, for those who work for religious minorities, amongst them Christian Solidarity worldwide, for those who work to bring freedom, for those imprisoned unjustly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose needs we know and carry in our hearts 
pray for those who suffer through the coronavirus, amongst them Francesca and her family. Pray for those in need of healing. Bill Collins, Marjorie Wallace, Sophie, Amelia Jackson, Andrew. For those awaiting surgery, amongst them Kate and Mel. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. We commend to your keeping those who have died. For those who have recently died in our parishes, we pray for Lawrence Marshall, Ian Marshall, Yvonne Moore. For those who have died in past years at this time, Jeffrey Joseph Pitt, Janet Appleby, John Christos Scholadides Worsley, Arthur Eld, Kenneth Mackenzie, Kate Leah Burton, and Ethel Charlton. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. In a time of silence, let us make our own particular thanks and prayers to God our Father. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Mary and the Apostles, St. John the Evangelist, St. Cuthbert, and of all your saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite the congregation within church to stand for the peace, and wherever people may be who are following us through the media. We pray that this peace will extend to you, that you may know it to be something to strengthen you day by day. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us look to one another and offer a sign of Christ's peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Father, may we celebrate the Eucharist with reverence and love, for when we proclaim the death of the Lord, you continue the work of his redemption, who is Lord for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth, 
For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image, and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again, you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law, and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy, and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendour and light. Yet, in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. On the night he gave him up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with all your saints at the table in your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Conscious of those who can't be with us here in church at this time, I invite you to join with me in an act of spiritual communion. In the words of the Anima Christi, if you don't know the words, simply make them your own as I say them. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, invigorate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me never be separated from you. From the power of darkness, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord has prepared a feast for me, given wine in plenty for me to drink. Let us pray. Lord, you have nourished us with bread from heaven. Fill us with your spirit and make us one in peace and love. We ask this through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, 
we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, thank you to those who've joined us here in church, who've been the congregation for us, and those who've joined with us live uh, during the streaming of this service. And thank you as well if you're catching up with us later on. This Sunday, the Eucharists are at their regular times of 9 o'clock in the morning at St. John's Church in Castleside and 10.30 at St. Cuthbert's Church in Shockley Bridge, this church from which we're streaming now. And all are welcome to come and join us at either of those services. Uh, look out for things which are going to be uploaded to our Facebook pages during the course of this day. Uh, look out as well, members of the congregation who get our weekly email. Uh, there'll be a link within it inviting you to a Zoom meeting next Monday in which we'll be doing some Lectio Divina, some study of the Scriptures in a particularly helpful way, well, helpful to me and to those who've been joining us as well. So more about that, as I say, uh, in our social media and in the parish weekly email. Now, I share with you the blessing for the rest of this day, for the weekend and the coming week. The Lord be with you. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.